This video is lifted from my training course, Effective Video Fundamentals, which you can get by following the link in the description below. If you're responsible for marketing a business, then you need to learn how to be a great presenter on camera. And you need to learn that so that you can communicate your message most effectively. Not only that, but this is a great opportunity to use your personality as a bit of an asset, so you can stand out from the bland and beige competition. No matter what industry you're in or what types of videos you're going to be creating, there's a lot to be gained from treating being in front of the camera as a bit of a performance. If you imagine a comedian or a musician getting on stage and doing their thing, they're going to be delivering material that is in line with their personality and it's very much them, but it's probably not the same as if you were to meet them at a bar or in the coffee shop. It's probably going to be more of an amplified persona that they're putting across and they're certainly going to be putting more energy into it and more kind of intensity than they would in day to day life. Well, you can do exactly the same thing in your videos and you should be doing the same in your videos because ultimately that's going to lead to a better performance, a more engaging performance and your viewer is going to stay tuned in for longer and listen to the message that you're communicating. So this is my system for getting great performances on camera every single time. Whether you're brand new to this and you've never stared down the lens before or if you have but you'd like to become a much better presenter, you only need to tick a few boxes to really become that much better on camera. So I've broken that down into the following modules. Before we start though, just remember, it's never gonna be perfect. If you strive to get 100% perfect performances on camera every single time, you're gonna spend a lot more time and energy and money in the pursuit of doing so than you would if you just lowered your standards a little bit. If you do that, it's not to say that your videos are gonna be any less effective but it probably means that you're gonna deliver a more human performance, it's gonna be much more natural, and you're gonna save a lot more time. I don't think any performing artist would ever say that they've had a 100% perfect performance, but I'm sure they would all agree that every time they do, every time they show up to their fans and do their thing, they get a little bit better. Combining that attitude of always wanting to improve with a little bit of prior planning and preparation means your videos are gonna be so much more effective. So let's dive in and learn how to be awesome on camera. Having a plan is the first step to being awesome on camera. With a plan in mind and objectives to aim for, you're gonna set yourself up to create the most effective video possible, which is comprised of the best performance possible. Without a plan in mind, you're just kind of winging it and hoping for the best. You're hoping that your video is well received and that it helps people and is useful and you're hoping, crucially, that your performance is gonna be good. But if you're anything like me, you need to plan a little bit beforehand in order to get the most effective video content possible and make sure that your performance is on point. This is really important because your audience will be able to tell the difference between a video that has clearly been planned out and had some thought put into it than one that is just being made for the sake of it. What I will say now is that you don't have to ridiculously methodically plan out every single video that you create from today onwards. Much of your content can be kind of more spontaneous and fly on the wall and you know if you just want to chuck something quickly on your Instagram story that's fine. You don't have to get out the mind map and start planning how it's going to work and stuff. But crucially some of your content is going to need that kind of attention if it's going to be most effective. Some of your content is gonna stay around for a long time. It's gonna be seen by lots of people. It's gonna be evergreen content that is useful no matter when someone comes across it. And it's this type of content that you really should plan beforehand. Not just so that the content itself is good, but so that your performance is as good as it possibly can be as well. So planning at its most basic level might look something like this. Let's say something's happened in the news this week and it's triggered a bit of a a link in your brain and you think, oh, that I could draw a metaphor from that. I could um, draw a comparison between what's happened there and something in my business, something relating to my business that I know my customers and my potential customers are gonna, it's gonna resonate with them. Maybe it's a, a problem that they have or it's an issue in the industry, whatever. So you would obviously need to plan how are you gonna tell the story of whatever it is that's happened in the news? This is gonna impact the length of the video, obviously. So if you know that you only wanna make like a quick one minute video for Instagram or something, then you're probably gonna to have to tell that story really quickly. You're gonna to have to 
skip out a lot of the details and just kind of get to the point. But that's completely fine because now you know that's what you need to do. If you've got it in your mind to start with, I want to make a really quick video that someone can, you know, if they're scrolling down the newsfeed and they just happen across this video, they can watch it within a minute and get some value from it and it's a little bit of promotion and advertising for my business and then they can move on. If you know that from the start, then you know exactly how to put that type of content together. You know that it's probably worth you know, making a super quick video on your phone than it is to do what I've done here and set up the cameras and lights and stuff, yeah? And it also means, crucially, that your performance is gonna be a lot more succinct. So then we're on to the important bit, how you link this new story, this thing that's happened in the world to your business and the many ways that you help people. Naturally, you're gonna need some kind of segue between the two. You're gonna to need to link them up somehow and, and say, you know, this is what's happened in the world and it got me thinking about this and this is what we do in our business. That's kind of the, the top and bottom of it. That's it on a, a very simple level. But if you think about this segue beforehand, before you press the record button, you're probably going to link up those two things much more smoothly. You're gonna be able to think, okay, this thing has happened. That is similar to what we do in our business here's the link between the two. So by thinking about how you're gonna link this thing that's happened with the way that you help your customers, you're probably going to deliver that link much more smoothly. And then the final step of the planning for this particular example would be to think about what am I gonna ask my viewers to do at the end of the video? This is our call to action, and it's something that I don't think a lot of business owners are, are really using as much as they should. I think a lot of people, present company included sometimes, we kind of uh, feel a bit, a bit awkward and a bit sort of embarrassed perhaps about asking our viewers and our, even our customers to do things. It's probably because we genuinely want to help people and we do want to promote our business, but we don't want to do so in a way that's like really salesy and horrible. That's completely fair enough, but you should be asking your viewers to do something because after all, all you're really doing is pointing them in the right direction of potentially more value. Yeah? So if they've watched your video and you've got more content like that or you know your product is primed to be offering to them at, at this point or whatever, then it's kind of your obligation to direct them in that direction. You might think that's quite trivial and you might think, well, I don't really need to plan that. I can just you know make up a call to action off the top of my head when I next press record. Yeah, that's fine. You might be able to do that. But as you make more content and as you attach more of this really highly valuable stuff to your business, it's gonna be really important that you know what content and what offerings are gonna be most applicable to the viewer watching that particular video. So in our case, we've got this new story about whatever and you might have made another bit of content previously that talks a bit more in depth about this thing, about this concept that you've drawn the comparison between. Well, it stands to reason that that should be the thing that you um, push people to, to go towards next. So again, knowing this before you press record means that when that point comes in the video, whilst you're recording, you know exactly what the call to action is gonna be. You can set yourself up to, again, segue into that and be like, you know, what I've talked about today is very similar to this thing I talked about the other day. If you'd like, go and look at this video as well and you might get some value from that. So this is super, super easy. This is not like grandiose planning. It's just having an idea about what you're gonna be talking about in your video rather than just leaving it to chance. Because again, your customers and your audience will be able to tell the difference. How much you plan is completely up to you. Everyone's different for this, and in my experience, what works for one person probably isn't gonna work for the next. So again, just as a bit of an example, here's the way I used to do things, which I discovered didn't really work. This is a script for um, one of my video courses similar to this one. This is for effective video fundamentals. And what I actually did was I wrote out the whole thing. So I went on Word and I typed out every single word that I was going to say um, over the course of filming this video. That did help because I knew exactly what I was going to be talking about and I made a proper plan and I could, I could see very clearly how the course was going to be split up into its different modules. 
Um, it was also useful as well because on certain sections that I highlighted, those were the bits that I knew I was going to get extra footage of. However, when it came to actually filming the damn thing, it kind of just all fell apart. I was with Naomi, she was filming it, and what I found myself doing was trying to read this script verbatim, word for word, and I had it in my pocket and I would get it out and sort of, okay, memorize that line, and then say a paragraph to the camera and then mess it up because I was trying to say it word for word, get it back out again, and the process continued and it, it didn't really work and I kind of went back to the drawing board with it. So, what I tend to do now for videos is, I do have a plan. Um, just off camera here, I've got my laptop and it's got a Trello page open, but it's all very loose. It's very, it's very much just bullet points. So I've just broken down what I'm going to say into these bullet points. And that, that's so much better, I think, because one, you don't give yourself the pressure of reading a script, which is never good. It's hardly ever a good idea. Um, again, previously I've filmed corporate -y type videos where the person I was filming insisted on reading from a sheet of paper and I've even held sheets of paper like, you know, above the lens before and it's just crap. Like, don't do it, seriously. It just results in like a really robotic, kind of, you know, totally unemotional, uninteresting, bland video every single time. I don't think auto cues should be used by anyone apart from news readers, to be honest, so. That's you told. <laughs> but it's also good as well, having, you know, just bullet points, because it allows you to kind of be more of yourself in your video and be a bit more spontaneous, like I am now, right? I'm just kind of, in a way, I am winging this video because I'm just speaking, it's just popping into my head and then I'm speaking it, right? But I've got the plan there. That's like the safety zone. And if I ever sort of lose my way, I can just look over at that and I know that I'm, I'm back on track. Now at least, I'm talking in my own voice. This is how I speak, this is me naturally. And that's what you wanna be on camera, you wanna be yourself. There's no point sort of trying to be like a prim and proper and perfect business person and you know, saying all these words verbatim, reading out your script word for word. I think that's what a lot of business owners, they get stuck into that trap, I, I'm not really sure why. Um, but again, you know, I, I used to be there. Again, maybe it's because we just want to do the best job we can, right? So we think, okay, this video, I'm going to put loads of time and energy into this, so it's got to be right, it's got to be perfect. That's, that's fine in itself, you know? It's good that you want to make really good content, but it's more important to make, you know, content that might be less than perfect, but at least it's you. At least the person that people are seeing is the person that they're actually going to deal with when they go and make a purchase. That's a really important line. So how you do this is completely up to you. You can make a script if you want. If you think that's gonna help you, fine, start there. Or you can make some bullet points, write them down to start with, keep them off camera or keep them in your pocket. You could even tape them underneath the camera or something if you wanted. If you are gonna do that, just remember that if I look down at where my notes might be, you can see that I'm, that I'm looking down there. So, you know, your audience will be able to tell if you're reading from something. So it's probably not the best advice. But if it helps you to start with, great, perfect. You could use Trello, as I mentioned. Trello is a wonderful, free, uh, kind of online project manager thingy. Loads of different uses for it, but it is really handy for sort of making lists and um, plans for things like this. My, myself and a few of my clients use it for all manner of purposes. So take a look at that if you haven't already. And then my final tip for this planning section is have a dry run. So before you press record, before it comes down to actually filming the thing, go into another room or take a walk outside or something and run through your video. Just kind of say it to yourself or you know, even if it's just in your head, whatever. But at least then you've kind of gone from A to B. You've gone through the motions and then when it comes to doing it again, you'll probably do a much better job. This is something that I do all the time. So before filming this video, I just sort of went upstairs, walked up and down the landing and talked around the subject to myself. There's no one else in the house, it's fine. It's not embarrassing. Um, and in the process of doing that, I actually realized that I missed out a point that I should have had in my plan to start with. So I got out my phone, put it in Trello, and it's done, it's there. And that just means that 
I feel much more confident when it comes to filming the actual video because I've already done it once, so it's easy to do it again. And confidence is exactly the thing we're gonna be talking about in the next module.